So you've chosen one set of black people. <laughs> you've narrowed it down. <laughs> Don't need them. <laughs> all right.
I might forget though. Yeah. In real time, here we are. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of Lamb was spilt. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all. Sin and despair like the sea waves cold Threaten the soul with infinite loss Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold Thanks to the earth who drive the cross Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that will pardon and cleanse within Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that is greater than all our sin Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace Freely bestowed on all who believe You that are longing to see His face Will you this moment His grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that will pardon and cleanse within Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that is greater than all our sin Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the opportunity to, to be together, to remember what you've called us to do, and to encourage one another, and to be your people. We give thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed? Walking daily by 
by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing? Bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white? Aside the garments that are strained by sin, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see each and every one of you here this morning as we worship together. I hope you're excited. Oh, I'm sorry. Those are one of those glasses. I hope we're excited about being in God's house to worship together. And so as I welcome you, I also welcome those that are listening on the phone right now. Uh, and so as they join in, we worship together. They have the information to worship right along with us, which makes it kind of exciting. And then there are those that are watching on Facebook, either right now live or they watch later on. And uh, it is good to have them worshiping with us. And so as we come together and uh, sing about God's grace and uh, how, how he washes over us, it is good to have the opportunity to know that it doesn't just happen on this morning. And so on Wednesday at 2 p.m., and last week I made it as a huge announcement because it was a change in time, and it went very well. Everyone remembered the time, everyone showed up, and so uh, we had a great time going through the book of Romans as Pastor Mark is leading us through that. And so um, thank you for joining via Zoom across the country and for joining us uh, down here live in person as we are, uh, actually Pastor Mark has, has uh, brought in some worship and stuff. So we've worshiped and had scripture and teaching and it's a great time on Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. So come again and uh, invite, 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 and we can have a great time together uh, worshiping on Wednesday. As always, Sunday at 1045, we start our services up here and worship together. The kids, they have their portion up here and down there, and they are um, going to have a great time fishing for people. And so they have a story that's going to go in that direction as they are downstairs. And then uh, let me just think through. Oh, you know what? Hello again Wednesday. I do a bit every Wednesday. I personally do a bit on my Facebook page. I bounce it over to the church page and, and on, our, on our website. And I do these little bits. And uh, sometimes they're funny. And sometimes they're just funny to me. And sometimes they're just... Uh, uh, talking about how it can uh, actually ask questions. How is this for you? You know, how is this for you? I, I can't I even remember. You ever do so many, like, man, what did I talk? I don't even remember what I talked about on Wednesday because my mind is so set on today. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> oh, my, my, my. I don't know if that happens to you guys. 
You get so focused. But I do that little bit. Hello again Wednesday, right before service on Wednesday at 2 p.m. And so uh, check it out. You can check everything out. You can email the church. That's in your bulletin on the announcement page. There's our email address. You can check out our our Facebook page, it's on there. You can check out our website that has a whole bunch of stuff on the website um, that changes every day on the website. So you can always look at that and see what's happening uh, within the church life. And so, uh, man, like I said, I hope you guys are excited to be in the house of the Lord and worshiping together this morning. And I'll stop with this one. Oh, wait, no, let me do one more. Because uh, we, we, we don't have a whole lot of birthdays popping up, but next week, when we go into next week, I believe it's Saturday, is Michelle's birthday. And so she'll be like, what, 22, 21, 18? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but we do have a birthday coming up, so make sure um, before, because it's before next Sunday, go ahead and give her a good wish of, of a happy birthday. And if you know of any other birthdays, I try, I do have a, um, on my calendar, and so they remind me even, this is whose birthday's coming up. Go ahead and let me know. It's, as it says in the bulletin, let's celebrate together the lives of the people within the congregation. And by that, I mean uh, all the lives that are touched. And so you can just uh, let me know, and we'll add those in. As I was, uh, you know, I'm just going to give you a, a, a happy inspiration. Um, I was clicking around on, on our websites and, and tweaking things, and uh, over the past, um, I think, as, as we have been a church online, we have had 30,000 clicks. That, that don't mean they've watched everything full or anything. Don't get your hopes up or anything like that. But we've had 30,000 clicks to our website, and that is just awesome. And I can tell you this that we touch the lives of people around the world. And I get emails from people that, or they give a, a little like, or they ask for prayer, or they are so grateful that we are on the web. And so our church is touching the lives of many, many people. And so be inspired as we worship together that our lives are touched today. Welcome. I've booby trapped this with many different glasses. We praise Thee, O God, our Redeemer, Creator, in grateful devotion our tribute we bring. We lay it before Thee, we kneel and adore Thee, we bless Thy holy name. Thou been when perils o'ertake us, thou wilt not take us, and with thy help, O oh Lord, life's battles we win. With voices united, our praises we offer, and gladly our songs of true worship we raise. Thy strong arm will guide us. Our great Redeemer forever be praised. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King. songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord 
as we are about to uh, go into a time of prayer together uh, this morning. There are things, um, obviously there, there is a listing in your bulletin every week. There are prayer requests that we have. They change. So I know it looks the same, but please check it out because there are things that change on here um, sometimes week to week. And so it's something to keep around with you. It is easy to fold up and put in your pocket if you have pockets, <laughs> or some way to carry this around um, for a time of prayer as uh, we gather together today in prayer. There's a lot on there. There's a lot of people needing healing. I think one of the hardest things about uh, the virus that has just, you know, devastated for year, uh, you can say years now, is the hard thing is not seeing individuals within the church. And so how do we get the communication of what is happening within their lives? There are some that are on here that are not sitting in these pews right now for the, same, for the reason that there are health issues. And so we want to uplift them in prayer um, that um, are usually here um, of, as of late. Uh, Irwin is one who's always on my mind, um, who's, t who's uh, asked uh, for prayer as he's suffering through some physical things and stuff like that. Then there's others that we are continuing to pray for um, for uh, physical things that are taking place in their lives. Then there are things that are happening in people's lives, uh, such as Alan. Alan had a little struggle yesterday. He was really trying to get to see his father in Las Vegas for a few days. Um, some things went bad, and, and he did not catch the bus. I did talk to him this morning. He actually called to ask for prayer for his trip that all will go well. And so we'll, we'll just continue to pray for Alan as he is making his way to see his father for a couple of days, and then he will probably be back uh, next week. There are just things that are happening, and so I encourage you to talk to one another, and in that you'll find out there's needs to pray for. Um, praying for uh, our dear brother Peter, who for uh, a long time has battled cancer, and um, so he is at the time and place where... Um, as he has said, he is, it's in God's hands, and so that's where he's, where he's at. And so uh, we want to continue to pray for not only Peter, but in speaking with Angelus just the other day, must have been yesterday, um, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the colds, the flus are racing through their household. And so not only their household, but um, their family. So it's affecting this house here and this house here as... Uh, they're sick with uh, um, one of the colds that are going around. And, and it just, um, Angelus has really asked us to pray, especially because she doesn't want Peter to get sick. And so, see, there's things that are happening. So we pray for one another. I said, like I said, the list is very long with those same situations. We pray for um, especially um, Corey and Abby Stocksdale as they are uh, ministering in Botswana, Africa and doing uh, the mission work there. And uh, we are all aware of uh, um, sometimes in third world countries, it's uh, a little bit more difficult on health-wise. And so we want to continue to uplift them and their churches, as well as, um, before I say our church, um, uh, there's a, a friend of mine, and I've been praying for them, in Oceanside. And they were the pastor down there. I don't know if you got the email, Pastor Mark, but uh, Tim Perdrugal, um, him and his wife, they had he had retired from ministry. He was still going to church there, and uh, but uh, uh, the virus has raged through their church, and he and his wife caught the virus, and their worship leaders caught the virus, and some members in their church caught the virus, and I saw over the Christmas. Christmas area that um, his wife had passed away. And so, you know what? Uh, I say that story, especially to pray for Oceanside. Um, it's just a church that I know and, and stuff like that. Um, but it reminds me to pray for the other churches that surround us. Just up this, we are surrounded by many churches here in our area. And so we should pray for other churches. It's not just about Culver City Church of God. We lift others up for God's kingdom in the work that they are doing. And so we pray for them. I um, got another phone call. This will be my last one. I got another phone call this week. And it's uh, uh, Pastor Sonny, 
who comes in right after our service with the Korean church service, and they have an activity or something that's taking place today, and he just called me to, to say they won't be here this morning. But what does that do? That allows me to pray for the worry church and whatever function they are doing that God will bless. Okay? That's, I'm just telling you how I kind of work through my prayers there. So we want to continue to uplift the other churches as well as praying for our church. The ones that are listening, the ones that are unable to be here, and especially, not especially, that's the wrong word, but because we can look around and pray for one another. And so if there's something happening in your life right now, I, do, I try to do it every work, week to pray for you. If you have something and you would like me to especially remember you in prayer, I will pray for you this week especially. I mean, I pray for you guys all the time, but there's times in my prayer where I uplift uh, the hands, and that's exactly how I pray. God, these people, and I name them who have raised their hands. That's why I try to do some mental things of remembering. So I remember you throughout this week as we pray. So I'm going to ask Pastor Mark at this time to come forward and lead us in a great uh, verse of song, uh, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is your faithfulness, O God. And so as we gather together, what a great thought process as we worship you this morning. As we come uh, as a body of believers who are always in your presence to know and be reminded thou changest not. God, you are so good to us. And we could easily count our blessings and name them. And to not just do it in a cliche but to, throughout our week, pause for moments and go, wow, God, you are so good. Or even in the moments throughout this week to just bring our, our heartfelt request that through our thoughts with you. God, we are so grateful that even though we, we pause to do those things, you already know everything that is on our hearts. And so, God, we ask that you especially um, bless over Work your Holy Spirit over the many requests that we have. Those who need healing. Those who uh, need uh, housing. Where finances are involved. God, we even pray for a family who, who's considering, uh, uh, as they do foster care, how, how much they can do to um, help the children that they are, are raising for the moment. We especially pray for that family, uh, for training them as they also, too, have an illness running through the family, God. And we ask that your strength will come their way, a healing will come their way, along with the others that we have talked about, God. We ask that you'll um, help our eyes to see your, your work as you work it within the lives of individuals that we are praying for. We even ask, God, that if there's an opportunity that you want to use us that we will be in tune to the movement of your Holy Spirit within our lives for each moment. God, we thank you for this place of worship that we have where we can gather. We thank you for uh, the opportunities of worship, the opportunities of hearing, and of giving. 
May our hearts be poured out to you, God, as we do our best in all that we have for you. Help us to be a church that is always uh, leading the way in certain, certain situations so that possibly someone else could come to know you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And before I sit down and forget, I just want to thank uh, everyone for their gifts. We do have the offering plates in the middle and up the, in the front. Um, and, like, and I'll say it again, always. And the things that the church does and its function in, in uh, teaching kids and bringing kids up in, the, in, in uh, God's stories, that's what's happening downstairs in God's stories. So that takes finances. To do the outreaches that we have done takes finances. To uh, come together. You know what? We live in a world right now where even to sing a song in church, <laughs> it takes finances. And there's so many legalities. And so thank you for your giving of the church. It keeps the lights on. It keeps the heat in when it's chilly outside. It brings the air conditioning in in the summer. It makes us comfortable as we get to worship our Lord. And so thank you for your giving. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Psalm 138, and I'm reading verses 7 and 8. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. I'm so <clears throat> ready. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family. Family of God. You will notice we say brother and sister around here. It's because of your family. These folks are so dear. When one has a cake and we all shed a tear into Christ in victory in this family so dear. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join tears with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. You will notice we say brother and sister. Oh. 
You know, there was a time um, in this church where downstairs we would all gather around and hold hands and sing that song, and I'm, I'm personally looking forward to that time again. Our Old Testament reading now is from, oh sorry, our New Testament reading is from Matthew 17, and I'll be reading verses 14 through 21. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, saying, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have you, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and se- suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. This morning we're going to be in an area of text, in also in Matthew. But in Matthew, so you go back a few chapters. She was in chapter 17. We're going to go back to chapter 14 as we go into this morning. And um, talking about doubt. In Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 22, the story goes like this. And it, when, as soon as I say it, you're going to, okay, I, I know this story. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up to the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away in a, excuse me, were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified in their fear. They cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. The disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Genesaret. When the people recognized Jesus, The news of his arrival spread quickly throughout the whole area, and soon people were bringing all their sick to be healed. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. And I'm like, wow. In life, it is so cool to read stories like this, And almost point fingers, man, that Peter. You know, we got some problem disciples, don't we? Obviously, we have Judas problem. (laughs) I'm just pointing some fingers. And here we, you know, not just this story, but we had a lot of problems with Peter, okay? And we had problems with Thomas. And 
And the list can go on on the finger pointing that we do. But I pause because the question of the day would be, why do you doubt? Why do I doubt? Do I doubt? Yes, just ask Connie. I, you know what? Um, when you think through some things, especially with everything that's happening, and, and uh, uh, I am one of those that, uh, I'll say it this, I, for me, I want to see all the stats, you know? S to me, stat statisticians, they, they help me remove my doubt. And so I, I say out loud, I am a man who has doubts. And in some cases, maybe it should be in all cases, I do want my doubt, actually I do, I want my doubt removed. I, who, doesn't, who doesn't want their doubt removed? Do you have doubt today? This is where it is like, uh, you know, when you talk scripture to some people, you know, I, I have friends, you know, tell me something about this. Tell me, they think just because I'm going to tell them something about God that their whole life will change. Now, God might be using me, just as I said in a prayer, God might be using me in that moment, but sometimes people are just looking for a stat to kind of help them along, but they really don't want to change that doubt process. We, I do it. I don't want to say we do it. I just want you to think about yourself. I do it with my doubt. And so when I look at Scripture for myself, I'm like, okay, let, let's look, look at a couple of things. In, uh, oh, I, in Scripture, Jesus goes to his hometown, and when he goes to his hometown, only a few people get healed. Just a few. In fact, the Scripture says, the, and this is what I love about Jesus. Jesus comes out and tells us the problem and tells us what the, remember on the back of your uh, bulletin, your, your, worst, your uh, announcement sheet, it says, Jesus says these words, what are the results? There's this one section where Jesus says words for healing, and the results are minimal. Only a few people get healed in his hometown. And Jesus says these words. I, a person that goes to him, his hometown is not, uh, 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 well, I'm going to paraphrase. You know what? The things that he can do is so minimal because you doubt. The people of the hometown do not believe. And so only a few got healed in his hometown. We're talking about the one who can heal everyone. Think of the lives in his hometown that missed, missed the boat. I'll say it that way. Missed out. In the story here, it's when I first started the, the scriptures in verse 22, it said, immediate after, immediately after this. Didn't you wonder what's he talking about? Immediately after what, Pastor? You will notice that in, in cases where there's doubt, Something right before that miraculously happened. Jesus is about to walk on the water, right? What do you think happened right before? He said, hey, guys, I want you to get in the boat. I want you to go across the sea, uh, uh, across this lake here. For I'm going to send all these people home. Doesn't the story start to go, what is he talking about? Well, what people is he sending home? Well, it's the feeding of, the, I believe, the 5,000 which was more than 5,000. It was 5,000 men. There was kids. There was women there that if you go into the, those historians, they'll tell you it was a lot of people on that hillside. And Jesus, remember that conversation with his disciples? They're like, oh, what are we going to do? You know, Jesus is getting close to dinner time. And to tell the truth, you're like Pastor Brent. You preach so long <laughs> that they're getting hungry. And what was that conversation? If you could, I hope I'm bringing back a memory of the story. Jesus asked, I believe it was Philip or, or, or one of them, hey, what are you going to do to feed him? He put it in their boat. He put it in their court. He put it where they had to remove their doubt to witness the miracle. They had to remove their doubt to see what God was going to do. And did, even if they did remove their doubt, what did God do? He did it. Because in that story, Jesus takes, well, what do we got? 
And he keep, here's the thing. When there's doubt in your life, know this, that Jesus, is the Holy Spirit, is at work with whatever is surrounding you. God doesn't leave you by yourself. And so what did they have? In the midst of all those people, what do we got? And so there's one disciple, I believe Andrew, well, there's this one kid. Guess what he's got? He's got five loaves of bread and two fish. Would doubt come in? Oh, yes. How in the, here's the doubt. How in the world is five loaves and two fish going to feed over 5,000 people on the hillside, Jesus? What does Jesus do? See, I'm telling you, if, if the disciples would pay attention, he gives thanks for what he has and then gives instruction to distribute. And at the end, do what? Pick up. <laughs> so not only uh, this, this would be a great one for, 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 for a church, a church, a church uh, uh, eating function. I'm going to give you instruction to set up and clean up. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. But in this story, that's exactly what happened. Jesus gave instruction to give out the food and then at the end, pick it up. And it was not for cleanup. It was for doubt to be removed at what God can do. And immediately right after that is when they get in the boat. See, a lot of times scripture, when, when you read through it, it doesn't have those words where it really connects this miracle here with this miracle here. You know, a lot of times when you read, especially in the book of John, he's here, he's here, he's here, he's here. You know, the story stops and then there's a, an interjection. Or, but here we have where this is what happened. And right after that, they got in the boat. It was nighttime. They went across. We have details of what time that storm was really hitting hard and when Jesus walked on the water. After the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, I, I love how the text here in Matthew goes because we hear it quite often. Whenever there is a difficulty within your life, the Lord comes and says what? Do not be afraid. It's almost like, uh, can, I, can, can I say for the thought process for me? Let me bring a calm assurance to you. Let me know. Let me tell you I've got this. No matter what you're going through, I've got this. Don't be afraid. And so you have the miracle. You have this Savior coming. Don't be afraid. You have where they went from the frightening it's a ghost to it's Jesus. And then you have Peter. who does a great thing, I want to come out to you. In all of this that's around me, I just want to come out to you. And Jesus, <laughs> come on, <laughs> let's go. Bring it on, let's come on. Not the way it was said there. It just said, come, come on. And what's Peter do? There must have been something inside of Peter. Okay, let's do this. Because what's he do? He gets out of the boat. But remember what I was saying. Jesus is working in everything that's surrounding your difficulties and your problems and all those things that bring your doubt. And it did not leave. It stayed. And Peter, while walking on the water, got distracted. And I don't know about you guys. When I tell the truth about I have doubts in my head, guess who gets distracted a lot? Ask Brother Keith. He comes walking in. Is this your phone? <laughs> because I had the phone, the church phone in my hand. We're doing stuff, and I'm walking, and I went that way. I had something else that hit me in the head. I put the phone down, and then I walked away. I did what I had to do. I probably walked right by it when I came back up because I was distracted. He comes in and saves the day. Here's the phone. So, yeah, Peter got distracted with what was still there, the storm. Peter did another great thing, <laughs> something that we should all do. Lord, help me. <laughs> Lord, save me. <laughs> and the beauty of this 
it's not the miracle of walking on water. It's this thought process that the Lord is there for everything, reaches down, picks him up, brings him back to the boat, which Peter, as a fisherman, would think of that safety of the boat. He's a fisherman. Fishermen don't survive in the water. They survive in the boat. And so I'm just thinking, talking this out loud. Look what Jesus did. Not only don't be afraid, not only am I going to pull you up out of the depths of the water, I'm going to put you where your comfort zone kind of is because I have something for you later on. But why do you doubt? Why do you doubt me? I wonder if the Savior asks that of us with the situations that surround us. Because I know I am not the only one that has the wind blowing and the waves crashing in. That's a little, uh, what do you call it? Where you're, It wasn't really waves or wind. It was the difficulties of life come crashing in on me. And I go, oh God, you know what? I know you can do this for me. I had those good prayers. Yeah, I had those good prayers. I know you could do this for me. And, I'm gonna, and there are times where it's not done fast enough. And most of it's my problem because I procrastinated to get to that point. That's my, maybe that's my wave, procrastination. That's my win, procrastination. Because when you procrastinate like I do, the stuff comes in. You knew about it for so long. It's right there. Lord, help me. I know you can. I read the story. But there's still something like, man, I'm, is it really going to happen? I, 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 don't, don't go, whoa, that, we need to get rid of pastor. He has doubts. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you this right now. Because in my doubts, my Savior always comes through. Why do I? Because I keep my eyes open. I keep my heart open. I keep my mind open to what he is doing. And then when I see it in his time frame, I'm always rejoicing. But before that time frame of it being done, I'm still always asking, God, please, this has got to happen. God, I messed up. Please help me. And if it ever comes, as it comes to be where God does come through, if I ever get arrogant and lose my humbleness, he has placed Connie within my life to grab my hand, pat me on my own back to remind, is a joke, you didn't do it. <laughs> and that's all right. We need, we need Connie's within our lives. You need someone within your life that walks with you side by side. One who maybe the Lord might use to say, you know what, God, help me. And he goes, right there, right next to you. I've got someone that will take your hand. i got someone that's going to walk with you through this. I'm, sometimes he removes all those problems. He removes the wind. Because in, in this case, what happened? He did calm that wind, didn't he? The wind stopped. So doesn't that tell you a little bit more than this, that it wasn't just the safety of the boat that Peter needed. He needed to see that I, the Savior, I control everything. I have the power over everything. I'm the one that can not only pull you out, I can calm the waves. Why do you doubt? So I look at things in life. And I really try not to blame anything. Because it is easy to blame. And I can do it. Because <laughs> you know what's with, with blame? You, this is bad. You feel good when you blame someone else. It's not a good good, but you do feel good. Why is that? Because it's not my problem that did it. It's you. When you step back and stop blaming and start looking at your life day after day, week after week, year after year, please look back at some of the things where you ask the Lord, please help me. Please save me. I'm going to tell you this. 
that helps in your doubt factor. Because when you see the times that he has helped you through anything, and I'll go, wait, anybody pray right before a test? I'm going to tell you how mine went. I probably told you this before. Dear Lord, you know I didn't take any time to study because I'm a procrastinator. But I know by the power of you and all my youth friends that talk about you, I think you can help me with this test. You think I'm kidding. In those prayers, then you have to battle the devil still because it's easy to open your eyes and look over, sorry, Pastor Mark, at another test. Hmm. <laughs> See, all of a sudden, that's not God helping you, okay? But I'm saying when you look back, and where he has helped you. It removes the things that are, it helps in the things that you are going through right now. In our conversations, um, when, when uh, uh, Pastor Mark and Cindy come early, the musician, uh, it's either Christian or Lauren come early, and uh, uh, I'm gonna joke again. Now, next week, you might have a guest, a guest, a guest musician. <laughs> Christian's about to go on a trip with his friends, and so uh, we pray hard, me and Connie. <laughs> and uh, without doubt. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe I'll step in. Anyways, that's off the side. I want to get right back on it. When I look out, what I was saying is, is we have conversations. They come early, and, and we always have conversations. And, you know, some of these conversations are hard because when we look around in reality, I mean, look at the church. If we look around, I mean, I know I say it out loud. I can see the spots where people have sat, and I actually know why they're not there. I know that there's, there's health issues. I know there's difficulty of of transportation. I know there's difficulty of more health. I know there's difficulty of uh, 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 other things. I know some are on trips. And so sometimes we look at the church and we go, man, what is going on? And, and, and so for me, uh, bear with me for these last few moments, you know, sometimes it's not really doubt. You know, I, I, I don't have doubt about the church. That's what I'm trying to make sure you understand. I have no doubt about the church. I look back over my years, 12 years, right? 12 years here. And as I look back on it, there's one thing that sticks out in one of my prayers, and that is for 15 families. If you were here, those, man, it might have been five years ago. You know why? And here's where I don't blame. Because to, uh, to, in today's society, not just in the church, in the workplace too, people begin to blame the virus for what is happening within their lives. The virus is bad. Don't get me wrong. The virus affects lives. Sometimes it even takes lives. But if we were to step back and blame the virus for everything that's happening right now, then we would then lose hope and begin to have a life filled with doubt. Because, ready? And, and, and some of you are going to maybe freak out. Because God can save everyone from their sickness. We sang a song this morning, Thou Changest Not. Correct? So if the scriptures that we even just read or had read to us, or I, I know that I just read, where all they wanted to do was touch his robe and be healed. And in that story, after the doubt, what happened? They got in that good old boat, the wind stopped, they got to shore, and as soon as they got to shore, Word got out that the one who heals is here. And a lot of people came to get healed. And according to this scripture, guess what happened? They got healed. When I read this scripture, it reminds me of other things. You know what? I read it, and every time I read the boat story and the healing at the, at the, as soon as they land and, and start heading into town, I think of the woman who interrupted another miracle, right? 
Because wasn't there the soul, the, uh, was it the, 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 the commander or whatever who had a, 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 an ill servant or an ill son and, and he came and wanted Jesus to come to his house and that miracle got interrupted, because there was a miracle, that miracle got interrupted. Do you wonder if the, if the guy was having a little, bit, a little bit of doubt? Well, I came to this guy and was going to ask him to heal my, my individual and now I'm kind of doubting because all of a sudden we're stopping. The story reminds me of what? That woman who all, what did she have to do? If I could just touch the hem of his garment. And what happened? Did, because she did not doubt, that woman was immediately healed. And guess what? The interruption that took place of another miracle, that person was healed at the time that Jesus spoke. That's one of the reasons that has fired me up. When you see the words of Jesus, you take them to heart because they bring about results. And my God does not change. What took place in the Old Testament, what took place in the New Testament, still takes place in the lives of people today. You can be healed. And then again, it might be the time of your last breath on this planet. And so all I will say is this, be ready. Because when that last breath comes, there ain't no doubt. You know, I, I, you know what? I'm talking to our dear friend Peter, where the doctors have said there's nothing else we can do. When you talk to Peter, he's more concerned about everyone else because I'm ready. <laughs> that man has no doubt who he's going to see when he takes his last breath. Why do we doubt? So, as I said, I'm going to close out right here. I still pray for 15 families. My prayer got a whole lot harder in 2020. When not God, but the government comes in and says, don't touch no one, don't talk to no one, don't see no one. 2021 came. It didn't change that much then either. 2020 came. Started looking at a little bit more statistics. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you this. Could this be the best year for our church? I have no doubt. No doubt. Because whatever God does here, that's what God does here. Am I going to get in the way? Sometimes, yes. See, that's the, if you want, a, if you want a, real, a real good life with God, be honest with God. You know what, God? I'm going to be that doubting Thomas every once in a while. Easy. My middle name is Thomas. <laughs> I kid. But, hey, in reality, d doubt will come my way. I will have to battle those waves in that storm, not alone. Could this be the best year ever for the church? Yes. You know what's really cool about my prayer about that? Because if it happens to be the best year ever, I'm going to go into 2023. Oh, God, thank you what you've showed me. What's going to be the best that you have this year? In 2024, you know what my prayer is going to be? Wow, God, that was great. What's going to be the best that you have for me this year? Why do you doubt? I'm going to close with this. Two things. What makes us doubt? I'm not even going to answer the question. What makes us doubt? The story goes what? The waves, the wind, what is in your life that makes you doubt? I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have this. I don't have that. This is my struggle here. This is my struggle here. What makes you doubt? The second question is even better. What rescues our doubt? In James chapter 1, I'm going to walk away from Matthew. In James chapter 1, and I'm going to ask uh, Lauren and Pastor Mark to go ahead and come on up. What res rescues our doubt? James chapter 1, verses 6 through 8 says this. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts 
is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. When that scripture is usually read, people stay on that last part. It's going to be waves. It's going to be rough. My mind is messed up. It's unstable. It's, 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 it's uh, double-minded. I'm thinking this way, thinking that way. Man, things are just messed up. Instead of the beginning of that verse, which is ask in faith. And don't doubt what you are asking. Man, I, I'm going to put this in a simple term. I'm going to go with my, my next one. Why in the world would you ask God something in prayer and then sit down and go, I highly doubt that's ever going to happen. Why would you even ask? I, am I going to be brutal? Am I, yeah, can I be brutal? That's the dumbest thing ever. Don't ask God and then sit down and go, well, that ain't going to never happen. You ask God in faith and go, God, every day, every breath that I have, I'm going to be looking to see that answer that comes my way. I have no doubt that you will do it. Now, let me help you in that rescue point. Ready? Sometimes God really reveals to you in those honest moments that you have with him in faith, you are asking the wrong thing the wrong way. Brent, Here's what you need to really be asking that is in, in connection to your request. He's not blowing me off. He's leading me down the path of what he has with that request that I had. Pay attention. That's my, that's my rescue. We had in Psalms chapter 138, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch your, out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. Why do you doubt? I'm looking. It's a little harder. I'm, uh, uh, Pastor Mark, I got to move my glasses up and down to see this. Because <laughs> usually I have all my scriptures laid out in big, big letters. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the dark valley of death, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. I know that's probably not your King James Version that you think of, but as I was reading that, that was probably rolling right through your head. Why? Because that is one of the most beautiful things of let me help you remove your doubt in everything. He will deliver. Let us pray. God, I thank you for a time where we can have honest conversation. And you have already known it. In fact, you would even know the opposite. If we were trying to lie, you would know. God, help us in our doubts. Be the one who calms the winds and the waves. Be the one who brings us to that comfort spot and be the one who leads our path. And as things are all around us, and we see the things where you've granted and, and, and you have uh, gone beyond what our doubt ever was, help us to be a people that can share with others, my God who rescues, my God who takes care of, my God, who has everything about us as we follow him 
God, we give you our best. In Jesus' name, amen. last week as I had talked to Peter. Uh, this is one of the songs he sang while he was in the hospital. I, I, and, he's, boy, and he's singing it to us as we were sitting there uh, in his room uh, at his home. And uh, it has dawned on me this way that I think when Peter does take his last breath, he will go right into the first verse <laughs> of how great thou art. And so I challenge you today as I get ready to leave, don't forget about Wednesday, 2 p.m. You can Zoom it. We have a Zoom link. You can attend it live and then worship. But my ch I guess my challenge to you this day would be, uh, in this moment, what song do you have? See, Peter has no doubt that he's going to look God face to face and say, my God, how great thou art. What song do you have when you get to see the one who has saved you when you first walk in, 
What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What song will you be singing? Oh, how I love Jesus. Is that one of them? Is it Our God Reigns? Is that one of them? Uh, and I, and I, the, I stop right here because the conversations that we have of late is the beauty that is found within not only the scriptures, but found within the hymnals. Down in my heart. <laughs> if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. No, just, that's, a, that's one of the, the older versions. <laughs> I got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. I'm telling you, when you walk out this door, what think about it. Man, and I'm not saying think about death. I'm thinking, saying think about I have no doubt and when I see Jesus, man, I'm going to just, I'm going to lay it all out for him. And I'm going to tell you this. You know why? Because every beautiful thing you say and sing will be a beautiful note in the Savior's ears. Right? All right. So good having each and every one of you join us in worship, both on the phone, online. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. I look forward to seeing you either on Wednesday or Sunday or even give a call. God, thank you for these moments. Uh, as we leave this place, we have no doubt that you are God. Help us in our steps as we leave. And help us to show someone else so they can, too, come to know the one who calms the sea. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>